Imagine going through a hard week of work. There might be just too much to do with just too little time to do it. Or maybe your work is wearing you down physically. After a week like that, how often do you tell to yourself, wow, it's so great that it's Friday afternoon. I have the whole weekend ahead of me. I get to relax, maybe get something small done at home, spend some nice time with friends and family. Maybe take a short trip. How exciting is that? And how excited we get about that taking that well-deserved vacation. Well, with retirement comes this great opportunity to do all of this without interruption. But what if I told you that retirement could be a trap? That there is a hidden, dangerous side to retirement? Today, I would like to talk to you about how, under certain circumstances, retirement could speed, speed up aging of our brain, it would make us slower and more forgetful, and ultimately it could increase our risk of Alzheimer's disease. As part of my Fulbright Fellowship at the Australian National University here in Canberra, I've had the opportunity to study how work and retirement can influence brain function as we get older. And I would like to share with you some of the results so far. These results are based on data from hundreds of volunteers from the greater Canberra region who were about uh, in their early to mid-60s when they were first contacted. They answered a series of questions about themselves, their health, their family history, and they also completed a number of tests that gave us a good idea about their memory, speed of thinking, verbal abilities, and other cognitive skills or brain functions. This study, called the Path Through Life Project, started in about 2001. Since then, the participants have been contacted every four years, and today I'll show you data that span all the way through the fourth data collection that occurred in about 2015, when the oldest participants were around 77 years old. I mentioned earlier that retirement could be a trap. To show you what I mean, I want to use changes in memory performance or in our ability to remember things as an example. To test memory, the participants were asked to repeat back words that were just read to them. They were supposed to repeat as many as they could. Um, the words were sort of random and from unrelated categories like tools, fruit, kitchen utensils. So the task was quite challenging. If you look at the slide behind me, uh, the horizontal line at the bottom shows you ages of the participants across this longitudinal study. And the vertical line on your left tells you how many words people actually recalled. And here are the results. What you see that at the beginning of the study, these participants were most likely to recall close to eight words. Later on, about 12, 12 years later in fact, they were more likely to recall closer to six words. And this is quite normal and uh, not bad. Now the story gets more interesting. When we separate scores obtained when people were still working from scores obtained when people were already retired. What you see is that the decline in memory was almost exclusively restricted to the scores obtained when people were already retired, whereas those who continued to work uh, showed a pretty stable performance. Something seems to happen around the time of retirement that could make people more forgetful. You could say that these results maybe could be affected by how much education people had and the differences in education, maybe differences in their mental and physical health. Maybe uh, the job they, re they, they worked in or retired from could affect these results. Well, we took all these factors into account when we ran these analyses. In fact, we also looked at reasons for retirement, and we didn't see much of an effect on our results whether people said they wanted to pursue new activities in retirement, or they said, well, they just retired because it was time to retire, or if they said that they retired because of declining health. Memory was just one of uh, several brain functions that we looked at, and the pattern of results was not always the same, in fact. Um, actually, we saw almost no effect on, uh, uh, of retirement on something like verbal abilities or more global cognitive function. Uh, that's good. However, we saw the same pattern of results that I'm showing you here for memory. 
for speed of thinking. This is important because decline in memory, together with decline in speed of thinking, are crucial indicators of our risk of Alzheimer's disease. Now, of course, this decline after, after retirement does not apply to everyone. But it seems like enough people experience this decline shortly after retirement. Enough people fall into this retirement trap uh, for us to be concerned. This seems to be a real problem. So what can we do to avoid decline after retirement? Well, you could say a great option here would be not to retire in the first place, right? But continuing to work is not always possible, and it really doesn't have to be a good idea. Remember, retirement could be a great experience that people should enjoy. And guess what? Many people enjoy it. Many people are just fine in, when they go into retirement. What that tells us is that maybe it's not retirement itself. Maybe it's how we approach retirement that affects brain function in a negative way. Now, at this point, I would like to uh, tell you a little bit more about what affects brain function. To put this into perspective, this is just one contribution. Uh, there are maybe three somewhat distinct reasons for uh, brain aging. First, there, there are the natural, there's the natural, genetically driven brain aging. We have no control over that. Second, there are random influences, such as an accident, maybe with a brain injury. Again, there's not that much we can do about that either. And finally, there's something we can actually do something about. There's brain aging due to the decisions that we make. And it seems like retirement is a critical time period when people become vulnerable to making decisions that could be bad for them in the long run. There's some research to suggest to us that actually uh, people sometimes stop investing in what they do, maybe a few years before they retire. And sometimes this trend kind of carries into retirement. Uh, people sort of disengage, withdraw, regardless of what their original plans for retirement were. Some have called this mental retirement. And this, my friends, could be the retirement trap. This could be what drives some of the changes that we see after retirement in memory and speed of thinking. One more thing here. What's also important here is that with mental retirement, with this disengagement, comes a certain void. We just cannot get that Friday afternoon feeling, that excitement about taking time off that we talked about earlier, without doing something challenging first. Okay? Let's look at this from a slightly dip different perspective. Okay? Let's say that we're all members of the same bank, all of us here. Let's call it the, the bank of TEDx. Okay? And we each get $1,440 every day. Not for anything we actually do. We just get the money deposited into our accounts, and we can do anything we want with it. Just imagine the possibilities. But every night, whatever we don't spend or invest into something disappears. But the next day, voila, a brand new deposit of $1,440 again appears in our bank account so we can have some fun. Well, as some of you may have already figured out, I'm talking about the 1,440 minutes that we get in every day. It's a gift. When we work, we devote some 500 of these minutes every working day to work. When we retire, well, guess what? We even get to keep these extra 500 minutes instead. Nice, right? Well, maybe not. It seems like when people enter into retirement, sometimes they become tempted not to invest enough of their time into things that are challenging. They sort of drift into a permanent vacation. And as they go on this really long vacation, guess what? They fall into the retirement trap. In order to avoid the retirement trap, we need to redefine what retirement is and recognize it as this wonderful opportunity to reinvest ourselves into things that truly matter to us. We can take on that hobby that we always wanted to have, 
We can re-engage with our family or friends, maybe in a brand new, more complete way. We can donate these extra minutes that we now have into volunteering. Or we can invest this extra time in, into other things that matter to us. But what we don't want to do at this time in our lives, if we can help it, is to disengage. So be wise with those extra minutes. Make sure that you do something challenging and meaningful enough to still get that Friday afternoon feeling of excitement, at least here and there. Find your post-retirement purpose and hold on to it as long as you can. Thank you.